Hello boys and girls, my name is Otsus T and welcome to another day in Minecraft. It's been a while. Today we will tackle the nether tree farm, but first I want to walk you through the different design steps. If you just want to see the build, skip ahead to 6 minutes 16, but you don't know what you miss, as I learned a ton. The first thing when designing a farm is to understand the properties of your farmable object. Nether trees grow up to a height of 27 blocks and a diameter of 9. The majority of the trees are below 12 blocks. The foliage is not destroyed when pushed. It requires a fungus and the right colored nylium to grow on. Growth is not obstructed by blocks. The nylium block can revert to nether rack when a block is on top of it at a random tick. I started with an idea I was familiar with and adapted it. This idea was the tree form I had already built. As the leaves don't break, they need to be moved same as the stems to be harvested with TNT. To get everything I calculated that I need to push 23 times, which takes quite a bit of time. Soon the first problem manifested as the farmable height was not 7 blocks but 12 and the redstone signal did not reach the top as introducing a repeater in between adds a one tick delay, this was not an option, so the solution is to come in at with the signal at mid-level with full strength. It turns out that redstone wires only transmit upwards through a glass or half slab stair. The solution I choose for that was to have instant repeaters midway. The basic steps for harvesting are detect the growth, retract the nylium so it does not revert, start a clock where the each tick moves one column out and count the ticks so that it can be reset when everything is done. The short input goes through an instant repeatum and creates a constant output which retracts the nylon on top of the slime block and starts a 4 tick clock. The counter counts 23 of those ticks before sending out the signal to reset the system by stopping the prolonged signal. Then I realized that the double piston extender that pushes the blocks out is in part triggered by the redstone blocks on the side. With blocks in front that do not break when moved, this method of harvesting did not seem feasible anymore. Instead of pushing the whole growth through one slot, it would be faster to push the whole tree. This can be done with a piston wall, but eventually the complete area would be filled with blocks, not allowing any additional stem growth. The solution is a flying machine which moves the whole tree forward out of the growth area. This El Mango design was also used in a jungle tree farm of his. This solution left the dealing of the lowest two stem blocks and the harvesting. The stems could be moved by pop-out piston extenders and pushed one block forward and then two up so they would be moved with the flying machine. The TNT harvesting is my masterpiece. The TNT needs to be delayed a different length of time so it can explode in the correct height. For the 12 block height I needed three explosions. As it is also 9 wide there need to be two TNT duplicators side by side that are activated in sequence. 
The mechanical concept is easy. The TNT is held back in different holding cells which control the delay. It is a bit complicated by the fact that the holding cell door can only be closed once the lower TNT has passed. This example implements the lowest two TNT explosions. At this point I realized that only one or two layers are harvested, but the flying machine can bring up to nine blocks. This requires a different design that shoots TNT with different delay at different height in from the side, similar to Ilmangus jungle tree farm, but more complicated as there are more blocks. At this point I realized that my farm would be very similar to Ilmangus and I wanted to use that design for a jungle and dark oak tree farm. Therefore, I will go with the design of Raceworks, which is also shown off in Random Gaming's tutorial. Now that you know what I'm not gonna build, let's start the time lapse and see how it goes. I can only recommend the explanation by Race or the uh, tutorial by random, both videos linked in the description below. So let's get a move on. <laughs> With the machine now complete, there are a few more tasks that I need to do before I actually can test and see if everything works. One of them is uh, removing the uh, sorting system, so I can hook up this output and the uh, output uh, uh, here, which goes into the composter. Uh, 
to down below through this hole so everything gets sorted and composted uh, down below and then of course hook up this dropper elevator to the uh, to the bone mill supply that's uh, over there somewhere and uh, also uh, spawn proving everything on top um, I used some uh, furnaces here instead of composter I was not quite sure why I would do would use uh, composters up here in the original design but then it hit me a uh, composters probably cannot spawn mobs on top of them and furnaces uh, can but uh, we can slap them uh, but let's get uh, these three things done and then I can actually try to do an actual test and now with everything in place it's time to test this thing so let's switch this lever and press that button and hopefully something should happen and it does it's nice when something works out as it should even if it takes some time to uh, construct it but that's it for today i hope you enjoyed this episode and i will see you soon in the next one goodbye